today. From Toronto, Canada. It's week 15 of the NFL on EA Sports. Jordan Love and the Toronto Thunderbirds versus Derek Carr and the Las Vegas Raiders. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. Nothing like the fanfare of introductions to an NFL game, and that was in evidence a moment ago. Fireworks, pyrotechnics, you name it. This crowd is ready as their guys get set to match up with Derek Carr and the Las Vegas Raiders. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, we look at this Toronto ball club as they interplay here. They come in off their very first loss of the year, suffered a week ago. Yeah, it will not be a perfect season, but I'm interested to see how they bounce back now that they know that chasing the 1972 Dolphins is out the window. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. Now whistles, and we've got a man down. A man down here following the kickoff. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. Sneaks his way forward only for a couple here. Second down. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. To pass. Here's Jordan Love. That's into the hands of 2 2 Atwell. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Hands it off out of the gun. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. For a lot of people, MVP award means the quarterback award usually, but over 100 yards again last week. Uh, they're going to have to look his way more than once when giving out this award this season, I think. Yeah, it's not just the consistency. It's been some plays that we've seen where we talk about it for weeks thereafter. That's what we're getting out of him over 100 yards last week. Expects to continue that in this game, too. Now a handoff here to his running back. Just a yard of the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a third and three. Watching that play unfold and watching him complete it brought back memories of doing all those pursuit drills to make sure you don't over-pursue and let a guy get a cutback laying on you. He did that very well. You praised him on tape yesterday for the angles that he takes to the ball. Took a great angle right there. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. A throw taken in by Tylen Wallace. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. Love, they go play action now. They'll roll him out right. Pass incomplete, but the flag in the backfield, and this might be a roughing call. So a pretty early first quarter roughing the passer penalty. Seems like the officials are going to let everyone know they're taking charge of this game. They're always going to protect the quarterback. And the nimble footwork gets him just inside the 10 to the 9, but no further. Second and two. And here's a handoff out of the gun. And here he'll get it down to the 7. Not too many more ideal situations at second and two in order to try and pick up a first down. They ran it and picked it up. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he'll work his way closer to the goal line as he's got five down to the three. And Brad, they went to a nickel defense, and that's a surprise this close to the goal line because ordinarily you use the back end of the end zone, the sidelines as extra defenders, and you want... And he'll take it into the end zone for a touchdown. A great effort there. 
his 21st touchdown of the season. And the Thunderbirds have taken a first quarter lead. Well, first quarter, maybe too early to talk about statement drives, Charles, but that sure seemed like a statement drive right there. Well, if we're going to talk about statement drives, I think what they're saying is we're going to establish the run. They gave it to him early and often on this drive, and he wound up taking it into the end zone. No going for two. They'll kick the point after. It's up and good, and it'll give his guys a 7-0 lead. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it ends with a three-yard scoring run. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And he'll decide to not bring this one out as their drive will begin at the 25. The Raiders set to go to work behind their veteran quarterback, and that's Derek Carr. Carr and the Raiders come up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Throwing to start the drive. Carr, and that would off the mark behind him, incomplete. Charles already trailing by touchdown early. This offense, how imperative is it for them to get points out of this drive? Well, they feel like they have to go ahead and match because of what was already on the board against their defense. But I think even more so, he's want to avoid three and outs. You want to be able to stay on the field for a little while, let your defense catch their breath a little bit, even if you don't score any points. First rep of the game for Josh Jacobs. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. A good run got seven on first. Here's second and three. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. From the 44, Carr. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. I know I spent a lot of time talking about how tight ends in a lot of cases now are pumped up wide receivers, but they're still big people. He used that frame right there to absorb a really big hit on him and held on to the ball. A bit of an opening there on the first down run as they get this forward for about six yards. The last run got six, now second and four. Working from the gun, it's Carr. Caught on the right side by Adams. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. Trying to run for it with Jacobs. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. Oh, now Miller slow and getting up. He's still down on the ground. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. We'll check on his status when we get back. On first and 10, here's Carr. Slant to Adams. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. That catch, number 750 of his NFL career, and it puts him even with not just one, but two Hall of Famers, Michael Irvin and Charlie Joyner. So some pretty good company at 7-5-0. Now you're talking about the play. Touchdown! Devontae Adams with touchdown number seven on the year. And the Raiders, they're within an extra point of tying this thing up. Brandon, what we just saw there were two guys who were in sync. The first in delivering the ball, but especially the person running the route. Tremendous job. It results in a terrific play. Extra point attempt to follow here. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he'll be brought down at the 28-yard line, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone gets him three more. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. Their dreams of an undefeated season shattered with the loss a week ago. Now, look, whenever an undefeated team goes down, you always hear some say, well, 
They needed that. I don't know, Charles. Is that a narrative that you buy into? Well, I haven't met a coach yet that feels like they needed that loss. You know, that's not something that they're in favor of. But I do know this. People like us, our colleagues, all of us in the media, constantly hammering a team that's undefeated. Hey, do you think you can do it the whole season? Can you carry it the whole way? That does wear down a group. And sometimes that loss, get us off your back, you can move forward from there. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. Love. And a high throw there as this is knocked away, down to the ground and incomplete. There is something to a game plan with trying to keep a defense honest with a guy with that type of speed. You do so. Send him deep. Try to throw some air under it and hope you connect downfield. On that play, they run successful. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. Love now on second down. And the ball comes out. Love lost it. And the Raiders pick it up. And he's into the end zone. It's a fumble return for six and a Raider touchdown. Now comes the kicking team here for the extra point. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. The scoop and score, always an exciting play in football, and we witnessed it there, grabbing it off the ground and then rumbling it into the end zone for six. Fielded just outside the goal line. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. The offense back out there at the line, ready for their next drive. That 7 0 lead of theirs short lived as they've now given up two straight touchdowns to fall behind by seven. Yeah, but no cause for discouragement here. Yeah, they've fallen behind, but haven't they? And all the way in for the touchdown. A big play there. Hitting double digits with his 10th touchdown of the season. And the Thunderbirds are an extra point away from evening this one up. As a fan, is there anything prettier than a well-executed post round? No, it's a thing of beauty, especially when it's done like that for a touchdown. Uh, the throw, the catch, and how about the run after to get it to the end zone? Coup now for the point after. Now we've got a good one brewing. We're all knotted up at 14. Those are the kind of drives they like on offense from the coordinator to the quarterback, the line, everybody. One play drive and into the end zone for six. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. And this will be a touchback, so they'll bring it out to the 25. Out comes Devontae Adams in the offense for their next drive. You look at the numbers for him, and 1,000 yards, obviously, well within his sights, barring injury. He will get there. The question, will he get there in this game? Well, he would love to. Duh, right? Of course he would. <laughs> but, you know, watching him play this year, we often talk about defenses, you know, allocating extra resources to try and stop a guy of, of his ilk, right? But you know what else kicks in? His pride to say, okay, I don't care how many you throw in my direction, I'm still going to find a way to get open. I will use different moves. I will move against formation. I will come underneath routes and try and run through some people and kind of get natural picks in order to work his way open. He wants to get that 1,000, and he doesn't want any less passes to come to his direction. And they're able to get this one across the 35. A reminder, once we hit halftime, as we do all season, we'll send it down to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. He'll have all the stats and scores from games in progress around the NFL. The best multitasker in the business, the coach. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Car now on first down. He'll get this underneath to Jacobs. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. Good, strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. 
And Carr's throw pulled in by Renfro. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. Car to throw again. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off at the 25. There he goes left side. You know they pay me extra for this. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. And remember, this is the number one defense in the National Football League. There's a good example of why. Shows that they set an aggressive tone, not just stomping the run, not just getting after the quarterback, but the ball's in the air. They treat it like they're the receivers, and they went after that one and took it all the way. Coup for the extra point. It's up and good, and that'll make the score 21-14. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. And it'll come out to the 25 as he will not attempt to return. Derek Carr getting ready to go again on offense. He's had a solid start to this game, but bottom line is they're losing, so he doesn't care about his stats. He just wants to write the ship on the scoreboard. He wants to actually increase his stats because he feels like if he does, that means things will get better for his team, maybe get him back into the ball game or into the lead. In these situations, I remember playing with a quarterback once where he actually ran out onto the field first ahead of everyone else just to say, guys, let's go. Try and create that energy, create that spark. Well, so far he has one touchdown, one interception. He'll be looking for that second touchdown now. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. First down now, but the clock continues to move. Throw left side, taken in by Renfro. Now the Raiders going to burn their third and final timeout as they stop it with 19 seconds to go in half number one. From just shy of midfield, Carr. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. So this will be spotted on the midfield logo. It's a 58-yard attempt. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we send you down to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, time for a sprint to the finish, as it's time to get you caught up with what's happening around the NFL here in a pivotal Week 15. We'll start over in Texas at AT&T Stadium in Arlington, and it's the Cowboys who are out in front. Two touchdown passes there for Dak Prescott. From there, we'll head to Pittsburgh to check on the Steelers at home at Heinz Field. And they have the lead in that one over the visiting New England Patriots. Chase Claypool, a touchdown reception. Finally, we head to the shores of Lake Erie. See what's going on with the Cleveland Browns. And they are in a tight one, all tied with the visiting Ravens. Meanwhile, in our game, no shortage of offense as each team has been able to move the ball effectively. Will the defenses show up in the second half? To find out, we give it back to our commentators, Brandon Gotten and Charles Davis. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. The Raiders are going to have it first, and they trail here as we get back to it in this third quarter of action. And we will not have a run back here as the second half starts with a touchback. Out comes the Raiders' offense. They'll go on offense first to start quarter number three. 
And they're still very much in this game, although they do trail. What's the game plan, Charles, for the second half? It might be a little counterintuitive because most people will think losing equals passing. Blitz coming and down he goes. Jamin Davis coming in hard that time on the blitz and he gets him down. It's a loss of four. Well, they sit him on the blitz from that linebacker spot, and boy, he got there quickly. He certainly did, and obviously he could have used a block from his running back, but I think you nailed it right there. The defender got into the backfield. So oh, he rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Adrian Amos with a pick, and he'll get this back to the 32-yard line. Tough one there. First drive of the third quarter, throw an interception, and now a chance that they could be in even a bigger hole if they can convert this into points. Yeah, but how good do you feel if you're that defensive coordinator right now? Because you just know that the head coach looked at him and said, turn him loose, big man, and he'd be able to take a few extra chances playing with this type of a lead, and boy, it paid off. Following the interception, love. Wide open receiver complete. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. From the gun, he'll hand this off. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. How many times do we say in this game is speed kills? And it does it in so many different ways. In this case... You got a back who's quick and shifty, can make moves, make people miss, but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down. That's some of the benefits of that speed, not just outrunning people in the secondary, and that led to a really nice game. And he'll give it here to his running back. He pushes forward for maybe three down to the six yard line. He's hit pay dirt a lot this year, but not that time. Yeah, I'm tracking right there with you. You're exactly right. He's found the end zone plenty of times. No way I can find any fault with the call. He may not have scored there, but of course you're going to give it to him. On third down, Love. The quick slant caught. Touchdown. Tyler Wallace, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Thunderbirds are able to extend their lead. Partner, they had a good lead as they went in at the half, and they came out here in the second half and found a way to extend it. I love their consistency. Don't worry about what they said at halftime. This seemed like a team that was ready to play 60 minutes, and while this game is far from over, I love their approach. Now young Wei Koo for the extra point. He's got it as they double up the lead. This one's now 28-14. Five plays there on that drive. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And this will not be returned. It's a touchback, and they'll begin at the 25. The Raiders offense now. They trot back out. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football. And that is caught one-handed. Oh, my, he pulled it in. A big play there for the Raiders. When they've needed a play this year, he's certainly been the guy to deliver it. As this season has gone on, he's been awfully consistent and sometimes spectacular. They try and run on first down, but this one's going to lose a couple yards as they get him behind the line. I see a shake of the head as he gets up, and you've got to imagine he's thinking, guys, you got to help me out. He's hoping his team can read his thoughts because he definitely needs some assistance. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Now Carr. And the throw there going to be incomplete. Certainly appeared to take away his first read, and by the time he tried to look elsewhere and find an open target, the coverage was too good. That one falls incomplete. And he put enough leg into it, but it's well off to the right and no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Down here in 
the third quarter, obviously that's one they could have used. Yeah, and one of my favorite special teams coaches in the NFL told me what separates the kickers in the NFL versus the ones who are not is not the misses. It's the second miss in a row. Best kickers in the league, they don't miss two in a row. He's got to get his head back together in case he gets another shot. From the gun, they'll try to run it. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. They got two of the three they needed there. It leaves them with third and just a yard. They're going to hurry back to the line now. On play action. Love to throw. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try to put the hammer down and finish this one off. Stop short of the 25. The second effort couldn't free him. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. We're off to the fourth quarter here in week 15. Happy holidays to all. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. They run a draw here on second down. A tough run, but not a huge gain. Dropped it to 25. Call it a gain of a yard, and it's going to bring up third and five. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where there'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. And that pickup of a first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? So frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or takeaway. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. Love looking to throw it to the goal line, but it's incomplete. When you run in the slant, timing is everything. And against that man coverage, there was no space available and incompletion as a result. Second and goal, and they will try again from the two-yard line. They'll try to run this one in. And he will take this one in for a touchdown. A great play there. Touchdown number 22 on the season. And the Thunderbirds look like they're going to get back in the win column as they extend their lead here in this fourth quarter. Now, CD, there didn't seem to be much resistance there down near the goal line. Yeah, partner, from what I saw there, not a real good job of matching up defensively because, to me, they looked like they were just in their base 3-4 package. You need bigger bodies in there in a goal line-type situation. The 3-4, 5 between the 20s, but not down here when you're guarding your end zone. And a dangerous throw there as that's knocked down and incomplete. So unable to throw it in for two from the two. Let me ask you, as a former DB, what changes there around the goal line on a two-point conversion as far as how you're defending it? You just make sure you never back up and you never retreat. You, you establish yourself really on the line of scrimmage, put your heels on the goal line at worst, and if they're going to throw the ball, make them throw it over your head because they're going to run out of space because of the back of the end zone. Never let a guy catch one in front of you. Now a throw here to his running back. They'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Shotgun now for Carr. The open man here, Renfro. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast as you should on other throws. 
Of course, the catch was nice, but how about what happened after? Able to stay on his feet and gain all that additional yardage. So many of these slot guys, I think, have running back in their background. Looking sideline incomplete. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. Here's second and ten. To throw his car. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. And Brandon, as you know, sometimes it's a lot tougher to run with these tight ends nowadays in the NFL. They're just bigger wide receivers. He lined up on the left side of the formation, ran a drag route across the field, and tried to work his way open. He was able to make the catch, but the defenders were there. Couldn't do a whole lot with it afterwards. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. They go with Jacobs, and he won't get there. They stop him a few yards short of the line to gain. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's our home team here in possession of the football as we come back. And the scoreboard on their side, they're just looking to melt away these final couple of minutes and put this one in the left-hand column. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Now it looks like he'll throw here. That'll be caught. Wallace hauls it in. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. And partner, they're locked in man coverage out left and end up running a crossing route. Rounded it a little bit more than a slant. And he's just going to angle himself towards the right side of the field, and that's very difficult for a defender to shadow him across all that ground. And he's going to take this one down inside the 45. 56 yards rushing for him now with a couple of touchdown runs to boot. And he'll run on the inside handoff. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 into 36. I know we're there of wide open football, a lot of spread formations, more space, but there's still a spot for power football. We just saw some of it right there. How about that run? Yeah, breaking the tackle, and you know, late in this game, he wants the football in his hands. He's had a good day. No gain on the play there. Second down. Gonna give this time to the tailback. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. So plenty of smiles for the folks here as they head for the exits. It's a victory for their hometown guys. And it was their defense that really made the statement after the break. They pitched the second half shutout. Yeah, think about the team that just got vanquished. They did score in the second quarter. Do you think they thought at all that that would be their last points of the game? No, I, but what a second half. The adjustment, whatever they did in the locker room, it certainly worked. It certainly did, and you're exactly right. Whether it was an adjustment, whether it was just more focus on what they planned to do going in, whether they they just played better. Whatever it was, it all came together in the second half, and no points were allowed. That's a great way to close them 